Hello, everybody. It's your friendly neighborhood tax man. Here to talk about something very interesting this time. So we're not going to be talking about accounting tax. We're actually, uh, we're, we're not going to teach you about how to do your accounting and tax. We're actually going to teach you what not to do for your accounting and tax. And what I mean by that, it's we're talking about ATO tax fraud cases and criminal cases. So I've got my guys here. My name is Sean. My name is Tito. And we're here to talk about that and react to the cases and tell you guys what you shouldn't do. So let's jump right into it, guys. We've got our whiskey here too because it's, you know, Friday. it's Friday. Yes, we don't really want to uh, take this seriously. Um, and because we're drinking right now, so don't take this as tax advice at all, guys. At, at so, all. It's just yeah. wholesome content. Yes, wholesome content. <laughs> Entertainment only purposes. So we've got this case here. I've done some research on it and it's a payroll, payroll officer uh, pays the price for refund and identity fraud. So how did this guy do it? He basically um, is a payroll officer for a large company. He tried to ob <laughs> he tried to obtain more than $180,000 by exploiting his colleagues' identities and he got sentenced to four years in jail. Um, so he was a payroll officer. His name is Mr. Faisal Hassan Russell. Yes. <laughs> Freaking good. Um, <laughs> payroll officers have um, all your tax file numbers, your date of birth, your TF, uh, and your bank account details, and pretty much everything that they know about you, they have it, right? And he used this information to lodge 29 false tax returns in the names of 28 different people. He attempted, mm. it says. How did you do that? 29 false tax returns from 28 different people? Maybe he falsify, falsified his own, own one. <laughs> maybe, <yeah. laughs> but anyway, maybe, uh, yeah. So Cause this, he's a pair off, so, so he can pretty much, can he? I don't think he can. So I don't know how he did it. Um, yeah, you need a TFN for each person. Yeah, so I don't know how he... Yeah, but on his one, because oh, he's maybe, a payroll officer. Maybe he lodged uh, multiple years. That's what it means. Uh, like, yeah, so uh, he may yeah. have lodged someone else's the same year. <laughs> but yeah, so Mr. Razel attempted to cover his tracks by using false identity to withdraw the funds, but it soon caught up to him. So firstly, guys, like, um, do you guys have an idea of how it happened? Like how he could do it? Yeah, so um, whenever an employer pays your wage, they would have to pay a component called PAYG tax withheld. And that's essentially the government's incentive to make people prepay their taxes. And when employees get to tax time, they're like, oh yay, I'm gonna get a huge tax refund, but little did they know they already paid the taxes. I guess this guy, he just lodged everybody's tax taxes and then got a tax refund for it. But how did he get it into his bank account? That's what. That's yeah. the question yeah. that I'm trying to figure like, out myself. Like, yeah, you can, <laughs> like, and how the heck did he create a, a tax return for that person. So was he, was he a tax agent by any chance? Yeah, so that's what I think. I think what he would have done, because he wouldn't have been able to sign on to people's, and that's probably why MyGov was created. Like, you know, they created MyGov to, uh, to uh, and everyone knows like MyGov is like a, a way for you to log in and uh, to, uh, it's a two-factor fa authentication where you actually check, uh, they, they check your securities and make sure that, you know, you are who you are, uh, who you say you are when you log in. But he must have got a another accountant, like could have been like Box Advisory Service. Sorry, I've checked my numbers and uh, my names and my clients. This guy is not a client, <laughs> but he may he must have like <laughs> pretended to be like Faisal. Oh, sorry, he may have pretended to be like you know David Smith, and then got another tax agent to lodge a tax return on his behalf. All you need to provide is the tax file number, date of birth, bank account details. And to receive address. the refund, right? Yeah, or oh, just to lodge yeah. a tax return, tax file number, date of birth. These days, when you want to log in and um, add a client as a tax agent, you just need date of birth, tax file number, and your name. That's it. That's yep. it. Yep. Yeah. As a payroll officer, you can't have that information already. Yes. So he must have went to a, um, you know, a tax agent and, um, you know, got them to lodge a tax return, pretended to be that person, David Smith or whatever it was, and um, prepared the tax return gave him tax deductions. And then how the heck did he get it into the bank account? What do you reckon? How did he get like his own bank account? How did he get the money into his, to him? Oh, yeah, um, that part, um, it's mm. going over my head. So my, what, do you have an idea? Do you, well, I have a suspicion. When, uh, when you give a bank account, all you have to give is the BSB and the account number. The bank name, you can just say it's Commonwealth Bank or anything like that. Yeah, but they yeah. asked for the account name in um, the, Tax return. So they actually asked for your, your account, mate. Uh, but just so you know, 
I actually don't don't know if the ATL he, or the. But it says here he attempted. He attempted, yes. So that means he never actually. No, he did. I think he did withdraw some. Did he, he obtained sixty-four thousand and five hundred forty-one dollars oh. in fraudulent refunds. Damn. So I think personally, he must have put someone else's bank account details in there, which could have been his himself. It's pretty dumb if he did it himself, or um, he could have put someone. Uh, uh, oh, he, he tried to cover up his tracks. Yeah. So he, he tried to cover up his tracks. I I think he what he did was he put like the BSB and account mm. name, and uh, sorry account number, the right one, or well, whoever's uh, not the right one. Like obviously he's or the one someone he has access to, but the the actual account name he may have put David Smith. Because I actually think that if you have a different account name, the payment still goes through. It still does. Yeah. Yeah. Like just in in just sending a like a normal bank transfer to anyone that you know. Yeah. Um, it still goes through as long as you got the BSB and account number, right? Yes. Yeah. They don't. The banks don't actually use the account name. So I think that's what the way he got through it, and he must have known. To be honest, though, I don't think he was alone. I actually think that. There was someone else. Yeah, he must have done it the, with someone the, else. The accountant, maybe, or the tax agent. Whoever yes. That. Yeah, because like um, to lodge twenty nine uh, or twenty nine tax returns, that's a lot, and to be able to cover yourself and cover, like it says here in the article that he tried to cover his tracks by using a false identity to withdraw the funds. Do you guys? Sorry. Bless you. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit sick. Yes. He, he doesn't have COVID. We've tested, but um, so yeah. So he attempted to cover his tracks by using a false identity to withdraw the funds. I think that um, a lot of banks, especially the neo banks, uh, yes. neo banks, that means the banks that are created uh, on the internet mm -hmm. and doesn't have a brick and mortar branch, they actually do their KYC process without actually looking at the client's face. So all he needs is to produce a fake driver's license or whatsoever, provide it to a neo bank, and then he'll be able to create a bank account under whoever's name. That's yeah. what I think. Anyway. Yeah, no. So I think um, it may maybe that like Mr. Rozelle may have created a false identity or created a fake ID. But to be honest, I feel like um, I've heard stories about this. I don't know if it's true or not, but I think that it's quite easy to grab someone's ID, especially when you're a payroll officer. Mm, um, oh yeah. Yeah, to just get the real ID and create another bank account and get the uh, credit or well, the card or the the debit card sent to your address or someone as, as someone's address and then get that and get the pin that's more sent to the same address and then pretend to be that person and then um you know go through the bank process of doing the kyc and then get the bank account and then withdraw the funds i think this guy is actually pretty elaborate to be honest to be able to do that um he was able to attain sixty four thousand and five hundred forty one dollars in, in refunds um, he tried to get his hands on additional 117,000, but was stopped um, by uh, these refunds before they reached this account. How do you reckon he got caught? Because to be honest, this is a pretty good idea. Like I'm not saying I would do it, but I'm just saying like it's pretty smart. I just wonder how the heck did he get caught? I actually, I have a suspicion. Well, I mean like if, if 29 people go to your MyGov account and realize that they don't have tax refunds exactly, anymore. Exactly, right? Like that's a pretty obvious. Yeah, because like report. there's a reason, like the ATO would um, send you a text these days or, yeah. uh, or you have a MyGov account and will send you a notification. Like maybe back then, back then, like a few years ago, it would be okay because they would usually send things by check and, uh, and mail. Mm -hmm. But yeah, nowadays, I don't think that's like even possible. Like everything is, everyone's got a MyGov account. It, like it's a pretty good scheme, but in, in a, now that technology has caught up, I don't think it's possible because X, Y, and Z or David Smith would have realized because he got a notification from the account, uh, from the ATO and then he went and called the ATO and then made a comment. But the part, I, I wonder how um, the, the federal police or the ATO actually found out it was him. The bank account. Yeah. It says refunds before they reached his bank account. So he must have. So so. If, yeah. So he must have used his own bank account. Yeah. That's how he got caught. Someone would have made a complaint. What um, we, we, they would have received. <laughs> Is that your they like, would have received an email on MyGov saying um, your tax returns has been successfully. And then check the bank account details and speak to the bank and then the cops probably requested from the bank uh, bank to give them who the user is. And then they realized that all the money was going to him.
I think we overestimated this guy. We, yeah, we, yeah. He's actually such yeah. a dumbass. Like, yeah. He used his own bank account. He yeah. expects that his 29 colleagues will not realize that their tax returns have been launched. Yes. But yeah, I yeah. think we've overestimated. Like yeah. the scheme that we we were talking about was mm. probably like much better in terms of covering yeah. that person's tracks. That yeah, so maybe he didn't try to cover his tracks at yeah. all. Like, um, so let me, let me read into it. Mr. Uh, Razel fraudulently claimed 64,000. He directed, oh, so, which he directed to a number of different bank accounts open in the name of others, including in the name of a false identity assumed uh, by Yeah, so that's, yeah, assumed right. by me. Mm. So, yeah. further so that's what we said, yeah. So there must have been a trail that went back to him. Yeah, there must be. Well, the trail was out or. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so there must have been a trail that somehow went back to him. Yeah. So, uh, and then this sentence demonstrates that the ATO will take firm action against those who obtain to obtain a fraudulent refund. And like they mentioned here that Mr. Rozelle was in a trusted position which he exploited for his own gain. This behavior should show his blatant uh, disregard for the law or not be tolerated. And I 100% agree. I think like for us to, and, and for us to, uh, to know like out there, like if you can't trust your payroll officer, you gotta do a security check. You gotta make sure that there is some sort of segregation of um, information yes. yep. or, or someone to approve his, his, um, his, his, work. his work. Yeah. yeah. Cause you can't just like give everything to the payroll officer. And I think this happens quite often and it's actually quite embarrassing for the um, business owner mm. and the business. A lot of this, like in, Honest opinion, I've seen some of this happen before, not uh, for my clients. Uh, what happens is they pretend it didn't happen at all. They, s they sweep it under the rug. Yeah, you guys know why they sweep it under the rug? Well, just to go back to what you said, it's embarrassing, right? Yeah, it is, man. Yeah. It's super embarrassing. Like, and it also makes them look bad. Like, why would you want to work for a company that can't even protect their employees, right? Yeah. It's hard for small business owners, but for you to have like, um. 29 uh, well, 28 people. There must be, I think it must have been a bigger firm. A bigger firm. Um, the funny thing is like the smaller firms, it's probably less likely to happen because like, you know. Because everyone knows each other. Yeah. yeah. But so imagine just, like, imagine if I was a payroll officer and I took the refund from you. Yeah. <laughs> and despite the fact that I've been to your house. Yeah, like there's not many people yeah. to choose from, right? Yeah. So yeah. that would have messed you over. Yeah, yeah so yeah. usually in small companies, um, the, the fraud happens by theft like straight up theft from, from the business bank account. Yeah, they're taking the money from it's the business really bank account. It's not really an elaborate scheme. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. The crazy thing about this is, uh, seriously, like I've seen cases of this happen, but not... To this extent? Not from a payroll officer. Uh, Try uh, guessing who it was. Who? The, the partner, the, the, the spouse. No way. Yeah. So, so you mean like the spouse did something similar to this? Yeah, the spouse of the, the person that's re receiving a tax refund. Oh, right. Okay, okay. Yeah. So the spouse would, would say like, oh, you know, could you handle just, my yeah, husband's it. tax? And then no, like, not even. They oh, pretended oh, to be why? the husband. Oh. They pretended to be the husband. Oh, right. And then, okay. and then um, the, <laughs> a year later, the, or six months or 12 months down the track, um, the husband comes to us or the, the partner, it didn't have to be a husband or wife. The the partner then um, came back to us to do a tax and we said, hey, your tax return's already been done. And then they're like, are you serious? And, and I was like, yeah, it's been done. We've invoiced you, we've, you've paid as well as the refund's been um, paid. And then they tell you like, which, where, which bank account did you tell And then I've been a partner. And I was like, awkward. <laughs> And then, yeah, anyway, I, don't, I didn't hear much what, about what, it. Were you there to see wait, the, wait, the so situation unfold? The, well, I'm not there in the house of <laughs> the <laughs> conversation, but I just told the guy that, hey, man. Okay. So was it just one incident or was it happened a few times? Uh, it's happened that, that, I remember that time clearly, actually. It's pretty funny. It was a pretty funny story. <laughs> Is he still with us? No, it wasn't like at the house home. It was like another phone. Uh. All right, let's jump to the next one. So a man who pretended to be running a business to get his hands on a fraudulent uh, GST refund. So in 2014 to 2018, Mr. Joseph Popik, uh, he launched 14 quarterly business activity statements in relation to his sole trader business, Joseph Popik Real Estate, right? So very creative from the name. Um, so I don't even know why they had to actually mention that, but yeah. So he launched um, a quarterly basis to pretend that he was running a business. He claimed the business had more than $300,000 in sales and he claimed 
$955 in GST credit. So 256955 in GST credits. So tell me guys, how much in sales did he report? He, he, he got GST credits of 256955. But, yes. um, so it's basically the GST in, uh, in sales minus the, sorry, the sales amount minus the expenses amount bracket divided by 10 percent yeah, yeah yeah you could do that um let's just say that um a percent, <laughs> yeah that, that, that's it's confusing because you don't know what his expenses are uh, right. like but let's just talk about like net profit how much yeah did you, you said sales net, okay yeah, net, yeah, net yeah. profit all right yeah, net, net profit, profit divided by 10 yeah how much did he make in net profit oh net losses sorry it would be losses, losses because he claimed correct. it how much do you think he tried to claim i just i'm curious uh twenty five thousand by the looks of it yeah okay all right how much the net losses? It's at least $2 million. Uh, I, I I can't do math, so it's divided by 10%. Are you divided saying that you're saying that the 256,000 is the GST is he trying to claim on? 256, he's trying oh, to claim so 2.5 million dollars in, in losses in the last like four years. Wow. Two point five million dollars. And then he had a revenue of um, 300. 300k. Like like well, like including the revenue. So 2.5 million dollars. Wow, he spent a lot. Yeah, no, 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 his revenue is 300k in four years. So yeah. he made less than 100k um, uh, in yeah. a year. Yeah. Yeah. And then but he, he spent more. Spent 2 million, 2.6 million in oh, four years. It, so probably more, like it's probably plus the 300k. So it's like 2.8, uh, 2.9. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He spent 2.9 million dollars in expenses to claim 256. Yeah, so 100 times. Like think about it, man, seriously. If you're the ATO, like, you know, you're a sole trader, Joseph Popik. Created ABN in 2014. Look, like the ATO is not stupid. They will look at your previous year's tax returns. They will look at 2022, uh, 2012, 2013, um, and 2012. And they will look at it and go, how much did um, Joseph actually make? If Joseph made $1 million each year, then it makes sense to that he put, put all his money into, into the business. Probably it has to be even more than that. But, and then, but then this guy put $2.5 million. He, they, the ATO isn't stupid, they would question it. And to be honest, I don't even think anyone in the ATO actually pulled up the, the file. I reckon what actually happened was that it got triggered in the ATO um, the data matching system and they just said, you know what, this like $256,000 that we had to pay in, um, in GST, we, let's audit him and just stop it and just ask him the questions. But according to bank records, he didn't receive any income from the business. So this guy had no money whatsoever. So he just completely fabricated completely. There was also insufficient cash flow to support the purchase that he reported, obviously. Mr. Like, where the hell are you going to get $2.9 million? Yeah. And Mr. Popik later admitted the claims were false and he had been carrying on. He hadn't been carrying on a business. In total, he obtained $189,270 in GST refunds. He also attempted to attain an additional 39,778, but this was stopped by our officers. So the ATO paid him $189,000 before they did anything. And was it over three years? Uh, four years. Four years, wow. Well, uh, three and a half. When the matter, uh, and then when the matter was heard at the Perth District Court, Mr. Public pleaded guilty to 13 counts of obtaining financial advantage by deception and one count of the attempting to obtain a financial advantage by deception. In addition to his jail um, term, he was ordered to pay back that money, $187,000. I'll be very interested to know what Joseph Popik's career, like what his job was. Well, because he... it seemed like he understood like how basses were were lodged, um, how the GST system worked. What do you reckon he did? Because for you to order, like to, to lodge $2.9 million? I don't know, man. He will at the very least need to know how to lodge his own investors. Yeah. It's unfortunate, to be honest, but yeah, man. So, what did we learn from it, guys? Yeah. Um, it takes the AT a long time to catch up to. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I seriously think that's a problem. Like, <laughs> that is a big problem. Like, it, take, yeah. well, it probably took him, like, how long? When, when do you think it took him four years to, like, he, he did it for four years? And then he's, he, he probably got a, 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 he probably in January 2018 or sometime in 2018-17, he probably got a message from the ATO and it's like, hey, we're going to order you now. Or from the cops today. It took him four years to kind of realize that. And that's, I think that seriously is a problem because that's taxpayers' money that you're paying to someone else. He, so he took, he obtained 180 
89. Yes. And he had to only pay back 187. Oh, he made a profit. No, no, no. Wait, he, no, he had to pay the full amount. He ordered to pay 187,000. I wonder who lodged the tax, or like the bastards in the tax return. Like, did he do it? He must have done it himself. Yeah, he must he, have done it. He must have done it himself. There's no way that... You never know. I'm just saying, like, if... Uh, I, I, because I, I reckon if any any accountant would have just done it properly... Well, I would, I would question that completely. $2.9 yeah. million. Dollars. If you're an accountant, you're not going to... You're going to ask, where the hell are you going to... And where are you making this much losses to be able to claim this much credit? It's 100%. Insane. Yeah. Or he might be in, like same with Mr. Rozelle, he might be in with it, with his tax agent. Yeah, scary stuff. Or maybe his tax agent was the mastermind, I don't know. Just saying, like, yeah. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not making any accusations, but I'm just saying, like. Just saying. Yeah. So that's two fraud cases for you. Uh, just as a quick disclaimer, we definitely do not condone this kind of things. Um, stealing from the government is basically stealing from the people. So definitely uh, do not do it. Yes. And then um, if you like this kind of videos, please leave a comment below and let us know so we can do more of these kind of videos and yes. we would see you next time. Yep. And Thank it's you. just entertainment, guys. Do not <laughs> treat this as any advice whatsoever. So see Otherwise. you guys later. Thank you. See ya. Bye.